and we're learning how to communicate with not just God and Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, which is God living within us. How cool is that, guys? Literally, we have God within us. That does not make us a God. That makes us connected to God, the creator of everything, big G. Okay, so I want to touch on briefly um, the time we spend with God, right? So if I asked you how much time you spent with God, what would you say? Just, just out of curiosity. Because if you're anything like me, you would say, well, I spend a lot of time with God, you know? Um, I take those moments when I'm about to eat and I don't just run through it. I like to embrace my food and, and really look at it as if it came from the creator himself because it did. Um, and I always felt like I spent a significant amount of time with him until I started doing this wheel. And the wheel is, I draw a wheel on my dry erase board and I break off pieces. So it's a wheel of balance. And I found I didn't want to be on a treadmill of life, right? It's just running and being like, oh, I'm getting all this stuff done, but going nowhere. I thought if I am going to run this race, I'm going to do it at God's pace and I'm not going to look at anyone else around me. I'm going to focus on me and my pace, my journey. No one else is because no one else lives your life. Not a single person out there. Not even if you're a twin, do you live the same life? We are all so uniquely different and to subject to comparison is really just hindering ourselves in so many ways. And there's so much comparison everywhere you look, literally on our fingertips with our phones. Um, but growing in your relationship with God, learning how to speak to the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what it does is it anchors you in this beautiful, beautiful relationship. And that allows you to look past comparison. That's not to say that you're not going to feel comparison time to time because we're human. So naturally we will, but you'll know how to handle it. You'll know how to address it. You'll know how to put your pride aside and say, you know what? I am being a little bit cray. I realize that, but why? and then to dig into it. And it's really beautiful and it turns something from looking at your flaws and dealing with the things that are wrong with you. And it's like a, you know, we don't like that because it brings up pain and it brings up trauma and it brings up things that are wrong with us. And oftentimes we wanna think other people are wrong, but we play a part in everything as well. So anything that went wrong, we play a part in it. And to know our part, whether it's very little or substantial is so quintessential and when you start to build that relationship you look forward to dealing with these things because it's god shifting out the dirt to find the beautiful fossils right to find the beautiful rocks he's shifting it all out and he has to shift all of that stuff out before he can bring you to your purpose because if you get to your purpose and you still have all of this stuff that hasn't been shifted out you're going to be so weighed down you're going to miss the purpose, miss the promise, and it it wouldn't have worked. There's no way you can get there unless it's moved up, shifted it out. He needs you to do that so you can fulfill his purpose for you, which is just amazing. And once you find that purpose, it's incredible. So not really what I wanted to touch base on, but that just came out of me. So we're going to rock with it. I do want to say though, I noticed on my wheel, I was really out of balance. Uh, my self care time, uh, investing in myself time, that was very low and my time with God. And I thought, okay. And, and I keep a few wheels up so I can see like the last three days of the week, you know, I want to know where I am. And I'm like, wow, I am really deficient in my time with God. I do an abide meditation, but sometimes I am not consistent with it because I have a four-year-old and 
emotions and I am trying to run businesses and live life in quarantine and just do a million things, but yet I always feel like I'm doing nothing. I'm sure someone relates to that. So I noticed and I was like, okay, well I do my advice. So then I decided to, to write down and this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself when and how much you spend time with God. And then I want you to document it, write it right now, pause this, do whatever, or do it after it, whatever you want to do, but write it down and be like, okay, well, for me, I do an abide in the morning, but sometimes I'm slacking. And be honest, man, it's only going to benefit you or hurt you if you're not honest, right? Like, what's the point? God already knows, so you might as well keep it a buck, and he will do the same. So, um, sometimes I do my abide, sometimes I don't. I notice when I don't, there's a change, for sure. I'm definitely a lot edgier and not in a good way. But the next thing I want you to do... Um, for me, okay, so wait, so then it was the abide that I sometimes do, and then I pray over every meal, so I don't usually eat breakfast, um, but lunch and dinner and snacks, so pretty much any food I pray over, I give praise to God, I thank Him, um, when I'm concerned, I pray to Him, I feel like I talk to Him pretty consistently, but there is a difference between praising God, um, praying over your food, and asking him for help, thanking him or asking for help or just talking, talking. Um, and the difference is, is that it's a one-sided communication. How can you sit with God and really hear him and be called to his vision for your life if you are one-sided? If all it is, is you speaking. So you're the only one speaking, you're thanking him, and you're like, well, I'm thanking him. He gave me this, and, and even when troubles come, I still thank him. You know, I put it to the cross, and I let him have it. He has a plan for me. So true. Not the, not the issue. <laughs> like, you could say it's an issue, or you could change the word issue with the predicament, whatever. The predicament here is that we are creating this one-sided God little g because we're trying to fit it into our own mind like okay well i spend time and i do this but our god is a jealous god he only wants us to praise him to give him glory to give him the praise and and the acknowledgement for everything that is good in our lives even though we think it's us and it is totally him and he sits by calmly as he watches, well, he sits by and forgives us and loves us after we sin and sin and disobey him. And he's just like, I just want you to come to me. Just come to me and talk to me. You don't even need to talk. Just sit, sit down, shut up. You can set a timer and it's like, we, we feel like we need to schedule God in. Everything else we'll do very quick to pick up your phone. I can pretty much guarantee that 98% of you pick up your phone before you do anything else. I know I do. And a lot of the times I'm picking it up to put on a Bible abide app, but I'm still picking up my phone and that allows other distractions to come in. And they do. I see a million messages and things and are ready. If I don't even want to respond to the messages, I'm like, oh, so much stuff to do. And I'm already preoccupied before I get to the main source. And there's a reason, there is such a reason why when Jesus was in Bethany with Martha and Mary and the other, um, and the disciples, they were all sitting around and Mary was sitting around listening to Jesus speak. And Martha comes over and he, and she's like, yo, Jesus, like, do you not think this is fair? Like, is this fair? Fair? I'm the one doing all the work, cooking and getting everything ready for y'all and all these, all these people, you know, like, I don't mind doing it, but I'm doing it alone. And she's sitting right there. Like, uh, can you tell her to come help me? Like, this is ridiculous. And he's just like, Martha, Martha. Mary has chosen the one thing that is an imp that is important. You're not going to take that from her. Like no one's going to take this from her. She's smart and chosen this. And we think 
we think that we are smart by choosing everything else but we're choosing the world over choosing the one who created the world and that is so bizarre because i've lived that way i felt like i had to schedule him in and i realized that once you start it's not bad to schedule him in at first when you're trying to create a habit like if you set an alarm for three times a day you know to pray just like daniel did three times a day and you set your alarm and you start to get in a habit, right? So you start to pray before breakfast and lunch and dinner and now you have your three times you pray and now you're going to implement in your nighttime med Bible meditation and your morning. So now you have, you're stocked from beginning to end of the day. There is no crack, no wiggle room for the enemy to get in an attack because you are armored from beginning to to end completely covered but it's when we stop when we slip up and forget to keep doing our abide and we're like eh, i'll listen to it tonight but then we go about our day and we realize we made that smoothie we didn't thank god for it but that's okay it was just the smoothie you know it's not like it was dinner lunch passes and you know we are driving and we're annoyed now and completely completely forgotten that God is with us completely forgotten to talk about him about what's going on just to to let it out talk to him about everything no matter big or small like he wants to know it and we think he doesn't want to know these small little things that we think are insignificant like let's not bother him with it he's got bigger things to do like running the universe and like making sure we don't crumble so he wants us to tell him everything. He wants to know about the person that cut you off and your friend who betrayed you. He wants to know about your broken heart. He wants to know about the person who paid for your coffee out of the kindness of their heart. He wants to know about it all, okay? Your eyebrow problem, your makeup problem, everything. Every last detail of your life he wants you to open up to him about because he already knows it a good way is to keep yourself accountable start those habits once you allow just a little wiggle room that's when the enemy weasels in and it's not like he comes full attack right he starts making it look alluring and he's just like "Ooh, okay yeah it's all right you forgot this don't worry about it and then before you know it, you're not, you're like, eh, it's my smoothie, whatevs. Lunch comes, eh, whatever. I was at work. I just don't feel like doing it. You know, everyone was in the room and I just was like, mm, you know, then dinner comes and you're just starving. You came home, you had to cook and you just eat all your food and you're just like, oh crap. Okay, well, that's all right. That's all right. I will pray. I'm going to set a time and pray. And you set an alarm and then you go do something and the alarm goes off and then you forget why you set the alarm. So you turn it off. And then you sit down and you end up being like, oh, let's watch something on Netflix. Okay. You know, you turn it on and there it is. Then it's time. You're so tired that you just kind of like go brush your teeth, fall asleep. Maybe you don't even brush your teeth, wash your face. You just fall asleep. And there it is from beginning to end. The enemy has weaved himself in the cracks and is now pulling apart every last bit of the foundation you have worked so hard to put together and if you don't have a foundation and you're just starting this relationship this is quintessential for you boo this is something you're gonna need because this is what builds it this is what gives a relationship you can't have a relationship without communication you can't have a relationship without trust you can have a relationship without trust actually it's just a really crappy one and it will never work so those are things that we apply in the world world and these are things that god's like duh i made you i know this this applies to me too okay it applies more so to me instead of thinking that you have to get up and get all these things checked off your list your to-do list and, and accomplish all these things you think sitting in prayer is a waste of your time like uh, well i'm sitting in prayer 
and I'm just sitting here in silence waiting to hear from God and God's like he's always speaking even when he's not speaking that's him speaking louder than his words <laughs> it's just wild how God works and I just I want people to know I want people to see how he works and know how he works and just understand what I feel because what I feel is so real there is nothing that could explain my life right now other than God every last bit of it and everything that's coming is the same thing there's no possible way in any of it without God and so I am just so driven to want other people to feel the same way don't let crap, the enemy create cracks in your in your foundation of your relationship. Communicate with God. He is your husband. He is your wife. And I want you talking to him 24-7 every single day. And talk to him like he's your best friend. Because if he's your spouse, he better be your best friend. And I'm telling you, you may feel like, oh, I have to schedule God in but eventually that's gonna go away. You're gonna be excited about it. But first you need to be aware. If you're not aware about how much time you're spending with God, then you will never realize how little time you're spending with him. When the most important thing is to spend time with him, when you wake up, the first thing you should do before you even brush your teeth is spend time with him. Before you leave for work, before you make a decision, before you pick up your phone, before you do anything, sit with God, listen to a meditation, thank him for the day, wake up with gratitude, thank you Lord for this day, for giving me this day. Though it's not where I thought I would be, I know it's part of your plan, your own little adventure, and he guides you along these paths, and then you're like blind walking and you have to trust him where he's leading you. And it's scary. And it's dark. But when you hold his hand, you feel really calm. It's super peaceful. And you just know that when you're around him, everything is okay. So you follow him. And every once in a while, will take the blindfold off your eyes and you can see glimpses of what's ahead and you can't find out about your purpose and create a vision that God gives you that sustains your faith and your hope or the sustain sustains your hope which is the essence of faith which is what God wants for us faith faith in him you can't have any of that if you don't have communication if you don't have and trust is built okay and we want to see things right away but God's like nah that's not how it works homie you need to trust me first and then I'll show you okay it's not your way it's my way and once you submit to that and you're like okay I've tried it every other way I have tried to be in control I've tried to do x y and z but now I see you know what it's you it's all you boo you want to do this you do it okay I live like this now this is your house this is your car you want to break the, your car down break your car down yeah it's not mine I you know whatever you want to do man it's your world I'm just living in it and life becomes this much easier to live because you're not trying to control everything and you're not the one who has to right because when God's hand is off your life he may still be around, but he's his hand isn't moving your things. You're moving your things. And when you move your things, chaos is created. It's just human nature, man. But when God's hand is on your life, supernatural things happen. Things happen that shouldn't happen. People look at you and think, wait a minute, wasn't that girl? No, 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 no. That can't be her. She was a hot mess express. There was no way she was getting off drugs, right? There was no way she was getting out of that abusive relationship. People look at you differently. They see things differently because there is a difference. You're made completely new. You're not who you were and people notice it. And it's this beautiful transformation. But the part about transformation is it takes time. You can't 
build muscle by going to the gym once. You have to be very conscientious of your diet. You have to be conscientious of what you're lifting, what you're doing, what exercises to build that specific area. Because if you're not, you're going to be wasting your time and not achieving what you desire. And that's the same thing here. You can't expect to have an intimate relationship and just jump in from like, okay, now I know God, now I'm in an intimate relationship. It takes a building process and the building process is fun. It, it can, it's not like we think it's this like difficult thing to get to and it's not god makes it so enjoyable because we get to see glimpses of him everywhere we start to see little miracles that we never noticed before and god's speaking to us and then he starts to show us a vision of where we're going and and you get excited and then yeah you'll doubt yourself but then god will show you something and you'll be like oh i knew it i knew it and then later on you'll doubt yourself again and he'll be like you know what i got you boom and he'll send it and you're like, ah, oh. God is so good. It's magnificent. And you go through this beautiful journey that starts with time spent together. And it can't just be you talking and talking and talking like you talk let yourself talk but also know there's a time to speak and there's a time to listen and the listening you'll be like well i don't know i can't hear god and it's like well you'll learn <laughs> it comes in your voice and it's a still soft voice now remember the enemy speaks in your voice as well so it's important to speak out loud and to know that when god speaks you feel peace that backs it up you know it's him because nothing god says is going to he's not going to be making fun of you he's not going to be doubting you he's not going to be filling you with fear anxiety anger resentment frustration depression anxiety those things come from the enemy and anything if he's like that's not true you're gonna fail no one likes you that's not god you don't need to change because Jesus will change you. And that's not to say you can be like, okay, I found Jesus. Now I'm going to keep on sinning. Keep on sinning. No, you have to put in effort. <laughs> you know, you can't just be like, oh, I found someone. Now I'm in a relationship and put no effort in. Because they're going to be like, okay, you don't remember my birthday. You don't thank me for anything I do for you. You never get me anything you never acknowledge me you don't communicate with me it's a pretty abusive relationship and oftentimes that's what it kind of is we're very abusive to god we say his name as like curse words like omg but like the real thing and you don't realize it i didn't realize it we i mean not to even mention the more derogatory ones right he gets such a short end of the stick and he is always there Like, we don't, a lot of people, we don't trust him because we're like, oh, well, he did this and then didn't do that. And it's like, we're trying to put him in a box, like our box of how he should be. Because we know God should be doing this. If he did this, he should stay consistent. Why would he do that? And we don't realize that a good parent, and, and some of us may be parents ourselves, but we don't realize that a good parent has to have boundaries, right? We don't explain to our children every move we make for them. We do it because it protects them and because we know better. So he knows better. So he does something to protect us and it may bother us and make us angry and not be what we wanted, but that's what we are. We're children, same as our kids, you know, same as any kid. They want what they want, what they want, and they'll throw a tantrum if they don't get it. And oftentimes we as adults act like that. We're like, you know, we get all angry when God doesn't do something the way we want it. And we see fit and we're like, that's it. I'm done. As if like, I mean, we hurt him in the fact that he loves us so much. But it's hurting you more than it's hurting him, I feel like. Because to live without God in your life. Wow, life would be really hard. Like, this year, 
unemployment messed up my unemployment, right? So instead of making like 50,000 to 60,000, like that bracket, they paid me 19,000, less than $20,000. That's not enough. <laughs> But somehow, supernaturally, God made a way, as he always did. If I didn't have his hand in my life, there's absolutely no way I would have made it. No way. Not a single soul. God is phenomenal. And once you learn, once you learn that, and you learn that it's his way, not your way. And you just have to submit to him. You have to be like, you know what? I used to be like, what's the word submit? Just give in. Just let him take control, man. Let him guide you, lead you, show you. You don't need to be the one driving. Sometimes you just have to sit in the passenger seat and let the driver do his thing. I know it's cliche, Jesus take the wheel. But man, when he does, he knows where he's going. He literally created me. So why wouldn't I want him to tell me where to go instead of me wandering helplessly? So here's my advice before I wrap this up. And that is write down every day. I want you to write down each time you spend time with God. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. I want you to do that for about a week first to get your your bearings. So start by a week and write it down. And then I want you to look at it and see how frequently you spend time with God. Put the date and then put the time when you spend time with God, right? So each page you'll have, you know, the day, whatever, Wednesday, the whatever. Um, and then the time I spend time, you know, whatever you did, meditation, prayer, sat silently, do whatever. Sometimes I'll do yoga or like Pilates and just allow myself to connect with God. You can find him in every ordinary day activities. Take the time out to spend with him and then enjoy him through the day. Because he's not just something you take out of the cupboard, consume, and then place back in until you're ready to consume again. No, you carry him through the day, man. You enjoy him through the day. He is just, he's there ready to add sunshine to every moment of every piece of your day literally every single part of your day he's like i'm here i can make this better watch me and you want to be like how the only way for you to know how is for you to actually implement this and try it because if you don't you're not going to develop a habit you're not going to notice how frequently you speak to him and about what that's another thing too i want you to then write are you just praying about yourself are you praying about others are you just asking for things are you asking for the right things like discernment and wisdom discipline things of that nature <clears throat> your prayers are so important and so i can't emphasize enough knowing how to properly communicate because you're then you're utilizing it to the best of your ability and you're building communication when you're building that communication ah ah things change things change they become ah, out of this world supernatural is the word i would like to use because it is supernatural so write it down see how much time you're spending and then if you have to set alarms yeah, it's scheduling him in now, but in a month, in a couple weeks, it's going to be a habit. And it's not going to be a habit because it's just like forcing it. No, it's going to be a habit because it's enjoyable. Because every time you consume and consume, consume, you're just like, ah, I feel so good. I, I feel like I'm walking on air. And you feel so creative and driven and motivated and moved. You just want to take on the world and help everybody. And just like, ah, I'm just like, I just want to sing all the time. I want to sing and dance 24 seven. And even when I'm like irritated, instead of carrying that irritation, I literally talk it out. Just, I just talk it out to him. And then by the end of it, I'm like, ah, that's why. And it's amazing. So write it down, revisit it, see how frequently you're seeing him. 
then add things. And remember, a smart person takes notes, but a successful person uses them.